Hi there, I'm Jill Finley from Jill Lilly Studio and I'm here at the Riley Blake Studios and I want to show you a fun project that's a free download on the Riley Blake site. This is um, my little pin push cushion called Posy Pin Pie. It's a little pie that you can stick your pins in and I've got it made up in two colorways here. This is the, my new fabric called Orchard. But you can use any fabric that you love and put together a really fun little pin cushion. So these are the supplies you will need. You need four squares of a light fabric, so those are my yellows, and four squares of a darker fabric, that's my pink. And um, these are four and a half inch squares, but you can use the five inch, like if you've got a five, a five inch stacker, you can pull from that and you don't even have to trim them down. We're going to be trimming these down after, so go ahead and pull those fabrics to use. And then you need one strip that is two and a half inches wide by 19 and a half inches long. And of course, all of this is in the pattern. And then you need a little bit of felt so that you can cut the petals. Those are out of felt. Two buttons. And it's handy to have a um, doll needle, which is a longer needle, so that when I'm uh, tufting this, I can go all the way through without trying to find my needle that's lost in the middle of the pincushion. And then you need a heavyweight thread. This is Arafil's uh, 28 weight, and that's what I use to tuft the the pin cushion when we're done stuffing it. So, oh, and you will need stuffing and of course the pattern. Now this is the pattern for, um, there's the pedal and for cutting the pin cushion top and bottom, but there's also instructions in the pattern that will, when you download, that will help you walk you through this. So let's get started. I'm just gonna move this stuff out of the way so that we can, we'll start with uh, those two squares and let's pop this stuff out of the way over here and get sewing. So the first thing we're going to do is make a half square triangle. But first of all, I need to draw a line on the wrong side of one of my squares. From corner to corner, just draw a diagonal line with your pencil. I'm going to try to draw it dark enough that you can see it. Um, and then you'll lay your two squares together, right sides together, and go to the sewing machine. We're going to sew on both sides of that drawn line, quarter inch away on both sides. So we'll start right here, this side. And then normally, if I was doing all of these squares at once, um, because I have uh, eight half square triangles to make, I would be doing them chaining together. So I'd chain all the way down one side and then I'd go through all of them at once and chain all the way down the other side. Okay. Okay, and then I'll take my rotary cutter and cut right on that line. You can use a ruler if you need, need to, but I, you can just eyeball it because that's just your seam allowance, so it doesn't count. Let me move these guys out of the way, and I'll take this to my pressing board, my ironing surface, and then just press that seam allowance, I mean the triangle open, with the seam allowance to one side. There we go. And I've pressed toward the pink fabric, uh, the hot pink. Um, so press consistently because they will nest together nicely if you do that. And now that's created two half square triangles. Isn't that great? And then I've already made some half square triangles. And here's the other two half square triangles that I made earlier. And these are what will make the top of and bottom of the pin cushion. So I'm going to lay them out with the um, points going into the center of the block. So I want, there we go, and these will be opposite each other. So the pink against the yellow, the pink against the yellow, just like that. And you, my seams are pressed this way, this way, this way, and this way. They're all toward the pink and they make a circle. So this is a four patch. So I'm going to sew these, put these two together and kind of nest those seams right next to each other. And I will sew right down there. Same thing with this pair of blocks. And I'll go to the sewing machine and sew on this right side. Okay, now, normally, at this point, I would tr have trimmed down my blocks, um, my half square triangles. We, I usually, when I sew on both sides of the line, I'm, 
they're a little bit larger than they need to be, finish size. But for this, we're going to be trimming this whole thing into a circle, so we don't need to trim anything. So I'm going to press this side and just cut this thread in between here. I'm going to press this side this way. And then I'll press the upper the opposite way. So the same for this one is going this way. That way they can nest together nicely when I'm sewing those together. So when I sew these two together, they'll nest together right here where those seams meet in the middle. Because there's a lot of seams meeting right there. So it's really handy to have those seams pressed the correct way. Then also this final seam. Okay. Look at that. It perfectly matches in the middle. Okay, now I've got a lot of bulk there, which won't matter for this project because we're going to have a flower on the top of it and a, it won't show. But just so that you know the correct way, it's kind of nice to be able to split this seam. So this last little seam that I just took, I would um, normally just kind of pop it. And that way I can press this part of the seam going this direction and this part of the seam going this direction. And the seams popped open in the center. And it creates kind of a little, helps that to lay flat. Now let me show you on this one. This one's already cut, but let me show you because you can see it better. See how I've, I've got the seam going this way and this half of the seam going this way? That's that final seam, but half of it goes this way and half of it goes that way because all of the seams are going clockwise on this block. Okay? All right. Now the next thing we go are going to do is to, let me get this to lay flat, is to cut this into the circle. And the pattern comes with the template that shows you how to cut it. And um, you would lay it on there. You could mark it and cut it with scissors or whatever way is easy for you. Um, I, I have a handy little ruler, which isn't required, but it's handy. This is Creative Grids. Um, six and a half inch circle ruler. And I'll just place it on. And because it's got the, the registration lines for the eighth uh, quarter inch, I mean quarter of a circle and then the eighth of a circle, I can place it right on these seams and know exactly where to go. And then I'm going to use a small rotary cutter. Now I'm using a small rotary cutter because that blade has less surface area that touches the mat so it's able to make a curve. Whereas your, your large, uh, blade won't be able to do that. So I'm just going to cut around this ruler. I mean around, yeah, around the ruler. Every once in a while I have to kind of pull off the side. You can use a um, rotating mat if you've got one. And, or you can turn this around if you need to. I'm just going to go upside down and backwards. It's just a small blade, so if you cut yourself it's not as terrible. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now I've got my little circle all cut out. And I've already done another one. So you will be doing two of these because you had, you know, the four of four squares of, of light and four squares of dark. So you will end up with two of these, a top and a bottom for your little, for your little pin cushion. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is sew, um, pull in my pin cushion. We're sewing the side on. And that is your two and a half by 19 and a half inch strip. First thing I'm going to do is sew the ends together in a quarter inch seam, making a loop. Okay, now I've got a little loop. And then I'm going to take it to my ironing board, move these guys, and I'm going to press it on that end, on the folded end, to mark the half. So that's that's marked in half. And then I want to open it up and put my seam, which I guess I can press my seam open. I mean, not open, but to one side. And then put that seam right on that marked fold. And then press these ends so that I can mark the quarters. So that marks my loop so that I have some, some sort of guide as I'm placing this on. So I place this on my, um, on my little circle. And I'm going to start with the seam 
matched up right there. And you can pin it. I almost never pin, but I'll pin for you so that you can see that I'm going to match that up. And then as I'm going around, when I get to the quarter mark on my posy pin pie, I know that the quarter mark on my fold of my um, side edge has to fit right there. And it's easy to do. We're going to sew this in a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to take this pin out because I don't like pins in my way. So just kind of ease this around as you're going. It's not an exact science, so it doesn't really matter. I just want that fold to come right out where the seam is on the quarter, quarter of the pie. And that one worked. It's nice when they work. kind of have a lot of extra fabric in the middle, but that's okay. You just kind of ease it. The only part, you know, I think the, peop the mistake people make is they worry about all this down here, and really all you need to worry about is what's right under the needle. So as long as that's matching up, you're good. You only need to match up about half an inch and sew that far. And don't worry about how what's happening down below. And then eventually you'll get to where there's another fold. And it's handy to use my little quilter's digit when I'm at the sewing machine because I can hold the fabric, kind of grab it. It's a little tool that Jalili Studio produces. And then just overlap your stitching so that it doesn't come undone. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right, now I want to sew the bottom on or the top, vice versa, whichever. So I'm going to do the same thing. Put the, the circle down and then place your side edge on top of it. And just ignore that other circle that's sitting in the middle and do this just like you did the last one. I'm going to start with on this one, I'm going to do a little back stitch to start and to end because I'm going to leave a little opening so that I can stuff this, this pin cushion. So you do have to, uh, so that you don't pop those stitches open, it's nice to do a little bit of back stitch at the first and the end. Let's see, this is my last wedge, so I back stitched and then we'll take this off. And now I have my little inside out pin cushion. And I'm going to turn this around. Turn it, turn it right side out. I guess I did leave a kind of tiny opening there, didn't I? Okay. Okay, now I'm ready to stuff it. Now, I wouldn't worry about um, having to press that seam because it's going to be stuffed. So it doesn't matter. So I've got my batting here and we're going to stuff this up. And actually I use stuffing, um, just any kind of fiber fill. I've got some here um, that I use, but I also like to put in a little bit of um, something heavyweight. So I use either uh, ground nut shells, which you can buy at almost every quilt shop will carry them. And it gives your, your um, pin cushion a little bit of weight and heft. This one has the ground nut shells. And I ran out, I didn't have enough, so I've got rice in this one, and rice works as well. Um, I think the nut shells are a little heavier. But we're just going to stuff with, with the little stuffing today. And that works just fine too. Okay. And now, I'm just going to sew that opening closed, and I've got a needle and a thread right here. So I'm just going to hand stitch this opening closed, just quickly. All right, I'm back into the stitches where the machine had done. And what I will do to tie this off, I'll take just a little bite of fabric, make a loop, put, put my needle through to make a knot. I'll do that two times. 
and then to pull this knot into the inside, I'll put my needle through the seam, come out in the middle somewhere, kind of tug it so it pops through that seam, cut that off. Normally you'd use scissors, but anyway, now that is done and I'm going to kind of fluff the, the fluffing out so that it's kind of even. Okay, now I've got kind of a beach ball. Let's put my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. And now the next thing we're going to do is tuft this. Now the more stuffing you put in, the harder it is to tuft. You do want a good amount so that it, it will hold its shape, but it can get kind of difficult to tuft. So let me grab, I'm going to need my needle. I think I hid it over here somewhere. Oh, here it is. And my heavyweight thread. And this is a dull needle, like I said. And um, I'm going to use quite a long length because I'm going to be doubling it. Cut that. And if you can't thread this needle, then your eyes are really bad. Because <laughs> look at that eye, it's huge. Humongous. Okay. And then I am going to use a double. Now it depends what, I would just use like a heavyweight quilting thread. This is like I said a 28, you could use a 40. Um, just something nice and strong. I put the two ends of the thread together and then I'll just tie a knot right here. I put my tail through there twice. And that will give me a good solid knot. Now that knot, this needle is big, so that knot's going to pull through the thread. So I'm going to do a little trick here where I push this needle in, come up on the other side, and then come back and up on the other side. I just need to be somewhere. Don't, you don't want to go right through the center. Somewhere, because that's all going to be hidden by the button. And then you can see I've got my thread and here's my loop. I'm going to put my needle right through it and that'll give me a good knot so it won't pull through. And then I'll do this, I'll go through here maybe oh four or five times to get it to get the tufting really nice. Okay. And one of those didn't one of my threads didn't pull all the way. There we go. Okay, and I've got some <laughs> little scissors here. I'll cut this off. Now that's all tufted and it's ready for me to add the flowers. So you can see that I, um, I didn't stuff this one as heavy as I did this one. So if you, it's got a little few wrinkles, but t fill it up nice and tight with your batting. I wanted to do it a little looser so that I could easily show you the tufting. When it's tighter, it is harder to tuft, but it's, it can be done, but it'll look better. Okay, so now we're ready to do our cute little flowers. And these are the petals, and I have a needle here with, um, this still is the heavyweight thread, but just a regular needle, not, not the big giant doll needle. And um, I've also threaded this with a double thread with a knot in it. I'm going to do the same kind of knot because any knot is going to pull through a felt because it's very loose fibers. It's not going to hold it. So I'm going to pinch it, take a little bite of, of the fabric and then come through and then put my needle through that loop to create my knot. That way it won't pull through. Okay, so I've got that one pinched. I'll do one more little stitch there. And then the next petal, I'll add the next petal. Pinch and take a stitch and let it sit right next to this guy. And I'll take two stitches. So one, two. All right, and then we'll do the next one. Pinch it and go right through that that fold. Looking good. Now the next one. Pinch it. Stitch right through that fold. Take two stitches. Okay, now this one I want to connect it on both sides. So my second stitch, you look on the back here. It doesn't really matter, it's all going to be covered up by that 
cute little button. It just This just kind of helps to give some texture to your petals so they don't just lay flat. Helps them to kind of stand up a little bit. All right, now there's my flower. And I stick it in here. And I'm just going to tack it kind of in a couple places just to hold it in place because the, the um, button is going to hold everything in place. So I'm just going to kind of do a few stitches to hold it there so it's in the right place. And don't worry about whether those folds are staying in because you can adjust those after. Okay, I've got Let's see what I'm doing. There we go. I'm going to pull that nice and tight. And then I'll tie off a little knot here. It's hard to see with these petals in the way. Okay. Okay, and then my little snips. Cut that off. Okay, now you can see on this that I can easily adjust these folds or turn these any way I want or need to. <laughs> There's a piece of rice <laughs> left over from when I was stuffing it with rice. So um, see how you can just adjust the petals after? So don't worry about those now. Once we get the little buttons sewn on, then we'll mess with the petals. So I've got my two buttons, and here I'm going to use my heavyweight thread again, so I've got to get my big needle out, my big needle, and my heavyweight thread. And I'm using a lot because I have to go all the way through the pin cushion and back, back and forth from side to side, and I want to use a doubled thread. So. Um, once again, doing that same method. It's really long thread. You, would, you normally wouldn't sew with that much thread on your needle, but because I have to go through this pin cushion all the way and I want to go several times to tie this button on, I'm going to need a lot of thread. Now clip the tails so that they're not too big. And then we'll just, I'm going to start on the back and I'm going to first make a knot by going in and then coming up to this other side. And then I'm going to move my petals back into place. And come. And then I'm going to go back. I'm not putting the button on yet because I want to first do my knot. See if I can get in the right place here. All right. And this is a really fat doll needle. I think you can get thinner ones too. Um, and then I'll go through the loop of my thread, my heavyweight thread, to create that nice knot. And that way the knot will be underneath my button. Then I'll put my button and go back down through the buttonhole. One button on one side, and then on this side, through the button, this is the tricky part. I've got a lot of play in this because that's that makes it easy for me to pull tight when I need to, but I want enough play so that I can see where my needle is. When my needle comes up, I want to go back in that same hole. I'm going to do the same hole twice. Now, you're really not using this, this stitching to tuft or to hold anything really other than the buttons. So it doesn't have to be real tight. You don't have to sew a lot of different times through the holes, just enough to make it stay on there decoratively. Sorry, that was kind of rough there. And then we'll go through this side. See if I can find my needle. 
once it pokes through, then I can adjust my button. There we go. To come through the right hole. There we go. All right. I think a thinner doll needle would have been a little easier to pull. There we go. All right, now I'm going to go back through. This is the second time through that hole, and I'm going to come in through the opposite hole now. You see my needles coming out the opposite hole. And I'll do this, this side two stitches as well. To end it, it's easiest to go underneath the button, come out, and then I take my needle off because this needle is just giant. And I wrap around the button a couple of times. Let's see if I can. Then I've got the two threads, you see, and I've got one going one way and one going the other way. And I will tie a couple of knots. And this is that heavyweight thread. One, two, and then I'll come to the other side, maybe do two more. One, two. Okay, and then we'll trim this off. You can do some more stitches through your buttons if you want. Um, I only did a few on camera so we could get through this, but now I'm going to adjust my cute little petals. And there we go, posy pin pie. All done. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, make sure you stuff this nice and firmly. Um, I could have stuffed that a little bit more, but you can see that these are both really stuffed tight, and that really makes a fun a fun project. Hope you enjoy Posy Pin Pie. Visit jalilystudio.com to find all kinds of other fun stuff. Bye-bye.